everyone. Welcome to Girl Talk. This is your host, Andy. And last week, we just had our Mother's Day episode. But I believe that one show is not enough to give credit to all the super moms out there. So for today's episode, we will still be talking about motherhood. But since it is Miss Universe season, we thought of having a mother and a beauty queen to join us for today. And we will tell you who she is when we return. for staying with us and we are so honored to be joined by such an amazing woman in the studio today. She is a mother of two beautiful daughters and she is also the first Philippine delegate to be crowned as Miss Earth 2008. Let's all welcome Miss Carla Paula Henry Aman. Hi, Carla. Hi, Andy. Thank you so much for joining us. And belated happy Mother's Day to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Carla, um, I have a lot of questions that I'd like to ask, but I'd also want to ask you first, how are you? Kamusta ka? Uh, it's been uh, uh, one start of a year, one uh, one heck of a year yeah. for 2021 so far. And I feel like kota na ko when it comes to <laughs> medical stuff, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, it was, oh my gosh, we, our entire family got COVID. And then after that, um, like a week after, I had to have surgery to get my gallbladder removed. So it was... One medical thing after another, and yeah. getting sick with my kids. And right now, to this, like even this hour, my kids are sick at home. So ah, it's been a very busy, busy <laughs> first quarter of the year. <laughs> so, katong imuhang, katong when you got sick with COVID, your entire family, were you guys symptomatic? Um, yeah, we were very symptom. Well, I was very symptomatic at least. It's like if you Google what the symptoms of COVID are, I literally checked every single box. That's um, in. Yeah, and the worst part about it was is that. Like it was all the symptoms all at the same time happening. And no matter what medication you took, like the migraines, no matter what med meds you took, the migraines never went away. You always felt nauseated. You mm. wanted you were so weak, you wanted to sleep, but you can't find a position because your head hurts and your body hurts. And so it was just very horrible for me. My husband had also pretty bad symptoms, his cough and he felt really weak and nauseated as well at times. Um, and so, for him, it was bad. Mine was the worst, then it was my husband. And my kids were actually okay. Mm -hmm. They had sip on and cough, but still ran around, still had a lot of energy. Um, our Yaya had as well. She had a difficult time breathing for a couple days. Um, so we were monitoring that. And the same with me as well. Among um, oximeter was on overload. <laughs> Over time, So yeah, it, it was quite difficult. But um, I'm really, really glad that we surpassed it and that we have now antibodies. <laughs> yeah. But do you guys have any idea how you got this? Like, we really don't know. We stayed at a resort our last couple days before we left. Um, so it could have been there. It really. Um, it also could have been in transit, mm -hmm. going home to Manila or going back to Manila. But um, really for me, what the thing I've learned from it is it doesn't really matter where you get it from. Like you can't blame the establishment. You can't blame the, the transit the planes or the airports yeah. or anything um, because you know they try their best to clean but at the same time it's like they don't know also it's there right and what's more important is that you yourself are more aware and um, a, a bit more conscious about how you approach certain areas or certain yeah. people and I think we got a little bit too relaxed maybe that's how we got it so yeah Fast forward to your gallbladder surgery. Maybe some people might be watching this and they might have been experiencing the same symptoms that you did experience. So what, what did you feel when you found out that you had gallstones? It's like it's like more like panuhot, right? Mm. And when you have panuhot, what you do is you do warm compress yeah. and then you do kind of oil, and a thick scent or whatever it is that you use. Um, and it will go away. Usually, <laughs> you just the gas will pass right mm, yeah. but in this scenario it's no matter what you do no matter what position you position yourself in it just doesn't go away and the pain gets worse and worse and worse and it travels from your abdomen area to your back 
and and to mine, I even thought I was having a heart attack at first because really? my my um, my arm started to get um, numb. Numb, and it was here, and then my jaw was even hurting to a certain point, so and so. All- that's why my husband rushed me to the hospital and they had hooked me up to the ECG machines and yeah. everything not right away because um, it was a little scary the feeling because you really think that you're having a heart attack but then it turns out that it's a gallbladder problem so but we're that's very sad. happy that you're okay now <laughs> yeah a few scary things very beautiful yeah. <laughs> now, as what you said hopefully ko tanagyod sa mga tanagyod sa medical condition so um going to your personal background carla we just like to know um so your father is canadian yes did you grow up in Canada or here gid ka natao sa Philippines? I actually I was born in the Philippines, mm-hmm. but I grew up pretty much my childhood years were spent in Canada. So, mm-hmm. um and then during my teenage years, um when I was about 13, we, my parents decided to move back to the Philippines because my dad was supposed to acquire a company here. Mm-hmm. Um so we lived in Bicol, which where the company was based for about ah, a year. Okay. Um but then my parents had split up and mm-hmm. I had opted to go with my dad. So my dad was the sole parent who raised me from pretty much 14 up here in the Philippines in Cebu now because um, he after they split up my dad it didn't take long and my dad um, re- met a Cebuana <laughs> uh, and so he decided to move to Cebu with uh, me okay. and and um, I Cebu has always been close to my heart it's always one of the places we traveled because we had family here as well when I was a kid so it was nice to be, come back here and kind of get to know Cebu mm. a little bit more and eventually really call it my home because this is the longest I've ever stayed in any place, like even Canada. So Cebu's been really home and my dad, yeah, my dad and I put up roots here and and yeah, it's, it's been nice being a adopted Cebuana. <laughs> So you graduated college here in Nagyed sa Cebu? Um, I actually didn't finish college. Mm. I took about two years. Um, my dad has this, um, he has this thing where he wants you to experience working first mm. before going to college because he wanted me to know the value of money yeah. and the value of working for it. Um, so. I actually started working when I was 16 years old. Wow! Here in the Philippines. Here, yeah. and um, I was a waitress in a restaurant in really? Manila. Yeah, and uh, it was quite fun because if I get, I got a bit of independency. You know, I, I made my own money. I was able to buy what I wanted. True. I didn't have to ask for my dad. And um, so this is kind of the Western culture in, it is. in your dad's parenting. It now. is. So even though I grew up in Cebu, my values and the way I was raised was very much Western still, mm. very much Canadian mm. as to what my dad is and, and, and grew up with. And so um, I think that's why for me, independence is a very big thing. And, mm. and I always kind of strive to push it to like to women. Like you really need yeah. to be independent. You really need to know how to make your own money and they stand on your own two feet. Like. Um, so it's like I, I'm doing the same with my daughters. They have my my eldest. She is six years old. She has jobs at home. Really? Yeah. She has she has As chores, well. <laughs> and she has to finish those chores to get money so she can buy what wow. she likes. And um, so, so it's, a bank account. Yes, she has a bank account and she has several piggy banks. Uh. And we've made her a deal that every time she fills one of those piggy banks, she gets to spend it on something that she likes. Nice. So, um, we give her that option. We give her that choice. So yeah, I, I was raised pretty much Western. <laughs> Before we dive much deeper into your parenting methods, um, how did you start your career in beauty pageants? How, when, how old were you when you first started? I was actually about. 15 when I did my first, um, 15, 16. Which one was this? Uh, Miss Intrums in my ah. in my school. And okay. I Since my dad had been the one raising me for a few years already, I kind of turned into more of a tomboy. Really? So, yeah, so I really love sports. I love like, I mean, I was even playing um, ta- uh, f- tackle football. Like, uh, it's, uh, uh, uh. There's flag football, yeah. which is you just have to grab the flag, but then there's tackling, like, and I, I like that better. So, and I was into hockey. I would watch baseball with my dad all the time, and so, and and the NBA. I was obsessed with the NBA for like a good point in my life. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I always supported the team from Canada, the Grizzlies, but they never really won <laughs> to my heart, you know, like broken heart that would go every NBA season. So, um, but. Yeah, I was a tomboy, and then I was in school in Kampulapulapu National High School. Mm-hmm. I was in public school, actually. 
Uh, I went to CIC first and then my dad put me in public school and he which he kind of think thought it was the same as public school in Canada mm. a little shocking to him that it wasn't <laughs> you know uh, so but it, it was still really really fun and and quite an experience to be there and I met some really great people that opened the whole path for me which was uh, see Sir Espa okay um, Espe, uh, see I'm um, um, pretty much our PE teachers Mr. Esperaguera yeah uh, and he said, do you want to join Miss Intrams and represent your, your grade level? I said, ah, I'm going to get He's like, what do you want? I yeah. said, well, at that time, there was still military training. So I said, can I get out of military training? Uh-huh. <laughs> and then he said, work ROTC. ROTC. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to go ROTC. I'm going to represent. <laughs> okay, deal. So also, I got out of the military training and I did the Intrams. Um, I think I won. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Can't remember. I think I won. Uh, and then they wanted me to represent for Milo Olympics and the Prusa. Uh, and so okay. I said, okay, let's keep it going. As long as I don't have mm. to go back to ROTC, <laughs> let's go. And I guess I did so. I, get, I did all of that in high school that I, I love the feeling of competing and, mm. and you know, the, the, just, the, just the feeling of representing something and, and, and um, having that competitiveness. So I was like, and then you feel pretty from the same But was it difficult for you to transition from being a very sporty girl, a daddy's girl, to entering the world of beauty pageants wherein you have to wear high heels, put on makeup, you know, be dressed in all these fabulous outfits? Um, Well, I never really had to do the heels and and like whole shebang that you were a candidate for how long and stuff Mm. until I joined Miss Naga, which was about, I believe when I was also around 16 or 17. That really was the one that opened up my eyes. And I was like, I feel like I can do this. You know, I I, I enjoy it. At first it was supposed to be meant to be a hobby, Um, but my dad was very against it. He didn't like beauty pageants at all. Mama? Um, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> how did you convince him? I didn't. Oh, um, you didn't know? No, I didn't. I didn't. Never convinced him. Um, <laughs> I just decided to just do my own thing, and and he was not a, a supporter of it. He Why thought, am I? Well, he thought it was a very shallow industry, and and especially he thought here in the Philippines it was political and rigged, and you know that somebody with me would know name or background mm. would never have a chance to win any of the bigger titles and I proved him wrong mm. you know um, eventually I did but I had to follow my own path and not listen to him as much as I was and I am still a daddy's girl like I still need to talk to my dad at times and still very very much value his opinion um, I can't I, I think I can't even do things without asking his per- not his permission his opinion his mm. perspective um, but he's taught me well enough to be so independent that I, I really follow what I want. Mm. And I did with pageantry, and I'm glad I did, that I never listened to him. <laughs> and at some point, he even said he was proud of me. So, and then, you know. But did his perspective change about the world of pageantry after you proved him wrong and you were able to bring home all these titles? <laughs> um, I don't know if it did. Uh, he saw how hard I worked um, for for my title and with my title because mm. um, he was in some of the events that I had already. I had to attend all of these environmental seminars yeah. and events and so I, I would bring him along sometimes and to get him exposed and see what we do. And I think with the particular pageant I joined, I was able to convince part of his mind about mm. it and see that you know, these women are really working hard for their titles and it's not just, you know, I get up and put on makeup and I look pretty all yeah. day. It's not that kind of, of um, pageant for us. And so I believe that's probably the reason why he said he was proud of me now because mm-hmm. he saw the work that went behind it. Mm. My dad's very, very big on work ethic and, mm. you know, working and, and being part of something. That's, he's very big on that. And so that he saw that, he saw me participating in something like that. It was would probably change his mind a little. But if you talk <laughs> about other pageants, he might not be as enthusiastic <laughs> about it. <laughs> so yeah. So when we return, Carla, we are excited to know about your motherhood journey. So we will be asking you all these questions about your mom she life when we come back here on Girl Talk.
Welcome back to Girl Talk. And of course, we are still with Miss Earth 2008, Miss Carla Paula Henry Aman. Carla, so manatag chika about sa imuha, the history or the beginnings of how you entered the world or the career of beauty pageants. And of course, how you got your title as Miss Earth 2008. So, what's your mom? The mom, the mommy hood. The mommy hood. <laughs> and I always, um, whenever I have mommy guests, I always ask them this question first. Uh, how was your labor like? For your two kids, you have two kids, right? Um, Stella and Emma. Emma. So Stella is how old? Stella is six, six, and Emma just turned one last November. Mm. So just to summarize, lang, how was your birth story like? Sa duha, like, um, was it uh, CS baka normal delivery? Did you have a painful labor experience? Oh, I think I'm gonna have a lot of moms be annoyed at me right now. <laughs> really? I had the easiest. Uh, first pregnancy ever. No? Um, yeah, it was just so pleasant. Like, my first was the first trimester was really bad yeah. because of the well, morning sickness mm. and I wasn't used to it. I didn't know what was coming. And I mean, I, I've like read about it, you know, that that happens, nausea and everything, but I didn't experience it. It was really bad for me. And I, But when I got after, when I got past the first trimester, it was okay, no. easy sailing for Stella. Like, mm. it was, she was such a good baby while she was in my tummy. And she was, um, well, she was a kicker, but you know, as most babies are. But during the labor, I actually did not even know I was in labor. Mm. I just went in for my weekly routine and um, scan, and my OB said, "Do you have any pain right now?" I said, yeah. "No, no pain." He's like, "Did you have any water discharge?" I said, "No, no, none." And he goes, "Well, because you're in labor." And I said, and my mother-in-law was with me, mm. um, and she just kind of popped her head out. She's like, she's in labor? Like, and, <laughs> so, when you were at that time? I was already at 6 cm. Really? Yeah, and no oh my pain God. at all. Like, I, not, I I'm not to, even joking. <laughs> I'm really bad with pain tolerance. Really I bad. had to go through 20 hours of labor to get to 6 cm, and I had an emergency. I know. See, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to hate me right now, because what, what I'm saying right now, like, <laughs> like, it's, 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 like 6 cm, wala. And then it was progressing so fast that, um, after mm. the doctor's office, it was right across the Budok lang. Yeah. Um, ang office into sa um, capital area. Um, and then we did a U turn, went into the ER, had to go into like the maternity or whatever part of the ER. They did an IE to check that I was yeah. in labor to confirm that I was. I was already at 7 cm. I see. So I was like, all right. So that's Without one more Without feeling any contraction? Nothing, nothing. I mean, like, there's like a little, but it feels yeah. like you're having your period. Uh, kind of like, yeah. like uh, kind of more menstrual cramps. Yeah, yeah but honestly, my menstrual cramps are worse. Mm. So I was like, this is kind of okay. And I had always planned to have epidural. I've like, <laughs> <laughs> that I already pre-ordered my epidural. Really? Yeah. Because I was like, oh, Bring on the drugs. <laughs> Bring on the drugs. Never did drugs my whole life. For this, for this moment, I give go. For this moment. So, um, my my OB was laughing at me. So you got a refund for that. No, I actually, I still <laughs> asked for it because I was so terrified about the pain. But I had gone all the way up to 8 cm and it still had no pain. And I was hooked up because it's a very... Um, it was a high risk pregnancy because mm. I have um, I have a bicornuate uterus, so it's only half a uterus, and it was um, I have a, a endometrial cyst but beside mm. it that was like the size of a tennis ball. Um, yeah, so my my OB was trying to be very careful that it doesn't rupture mm. uh, with my whole pregnancy, and I had two OBs actually, one in Manila, one in Cebu, and. Um, both were really taking the conservative route instead of trying to remove it while I was pregnant. Uh, so I was supposed to have a planned C-section mm. because we didn't want to do the natural because of the fact that you're, it might rupture. Yeah. So it might cause more problems. Okay. But my child had a different mind of her own and so she was coming out so fast that there was no time for a C-section. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was in labor for three and a half hours, pushed for about 10 minutes and she was out. So for the second, is it the same story? The second, I also didn't experience labor pains. I have been pregnant three times. Um, ah, so in between. The in between Emma and Stella, I was pregnant again and for, with twins, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, and I had a miscarriage at about nine weeks. Um, mm. So it was, it, there are baby angels, as mm. we like to say with Stella as well. Um, yeah, it was, but didn't get to experience labor pains with them. 
And with Emma, still didn't get to experience labor pains because <laughs> she also had a mind of her own and decided that she enough was enough and she wasn't going to come out, but she made a lot of problems in the tummy. Her mm. The cord was stuck around her oh, neck. Okay. The water level went down to half. Yeah. Um, and one of her foot, she was doing, she's like a gymnast in my tummy. Uh -huh. <laughs> one was up, the other was down. Ah, and split na shadaan sa tummy. So we were trying to kind of, and then she was here, invert, mm -hmm. that's invert that, I think. Uh -oh. I'm not sure, like, but the head was here. So we were trying so to he, massage her. In, in Bisaya, they call that Suhi. Suhi, yeah. yeah. So, so when you like kind of massage mm -hmm. to kind of get her to go down, but because her leg was up, it was causing problems. And then um, when they did the ultrasound, uh, as they were moving it, they saw that the cord was stuck mm. and that the water level had gone down. So I had to have an emergency CS right then and there. Mm. So okay. within um, us finding out 30 minutes, 40 minutes, she was out already. Mm. So it happened really fast again. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was okay. Recovery was fine. Um, I think for the most part, my two kids were good and easy with me Yeah. in terms of the whole um, having the baby and the labor part. And it was okay for me. Not as hectic. For now that you have a toddler and again, and you put up the toddler and childhood uh, phase among kids, what would you say is the most challenging part of being a mom? Is it like handling a newborn? Having the infant stage? You know, I, for me, my good, ang infant stage, they have to be ma anxious because if they get to meet their milestones or not. No, pumani siya ni kamang apo anas iba. There are all these. Yeah. Sometimes you get to compare it with other babies of the same age. Is it the newborn stage, kana infancy stage, or the toddler stage na super ka hyper? <laughs> I think what's the hardest, um, based on my experience alone, is two parts of it. Is I, I went through my whole life just kind of worrying about myself. I mean, like, obviously, I love my, my dad and everything, and I worry about him, but it's different because all you have to think about, I was raised to think about myself and worry about myself in terms of, not in a selfish way, but in terms of, of you know, worry where you'll be at in your career. You know, mm. don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Don't worry <laughs> about what other people want. Like, do follow your own thing, follow your own path. That changes when you you become yeah. a mom. Like you can't just you you no longer worry about yourself. You constantly just worry about your kids. Like something's gonna happen, to, and even when you're married and you, with your husband, you're also worried something's gonna happen to your husband. Yeah. You're like you know <laughs> health wise or you know whatnot, and and it's just the constant paranoia and worry that's in your mind that sometimes causes you anxiety when you're trying to sleep at night. Like. Um, Sige lang ka Google. Sige lang ka Is Google. it okay for like, baby too? Yeah, <laughs> Is it like, okay for <laughs> Last night, my, 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 my baby was vomiting because she's sick. And so I was like non-stop Googling, non-stop texting uh -oh. with her pedia. And like, so you're worrying about. And also, I think for, for me, like I said, I was brought into the workforce early. And mm. I loved it. I loved working. I loved being part of, of an industry and having a career and, and doing something for myself. Um, and it's hard to find that balance when you're a mom because you wanna, you wanna be able to be there for them mm. and experience all the little milestones and also be the one to cook their food and yeah. to teach them stuff and and you know, but you also have to worry about your career. You also have to. You can't just put it on hold completely. Like especially in the industry that I'm in, if if I take too long and stay out of the the entertainment industry for too long, I'm gonna be replaced quite fast and easily and, mm. and you know, directors mm. are not gonna know my name and, mm. and so I have to kind of restart my PR job all over yeah. again. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's trying to find a good balance of creating, like keeping that part of yourself for yourself and as much as you want to dedicate so much time and effort for your kids as well. So. I think that's that's every mom's like dilemma, yeah. the balancing work life, that's it. work life, mom life, and then and you have you're, you're, wife life. Yeah. <laughs> you can't forget that you're still a wife, yeah. like you know. And so to the for the single moms, I mean, it's hard for them too because they also have to think about True. all the other things that the Another dads finances. bring in. Yeah. yeah. So, but is it more difficult, Carla, for um, people like you, title holders? who are now mothers. Did you feel a lot of pressure after giving birth to go back to your prepartum figure? I think I did, but not so, probably because of 
of the industry I was in. Mm. It's more so that you know I, I host events and and pageants on a regular basis as a profession, and and if I go back and I'm I'm bigger than I was before, uh, you kind of get that you stereotype or stigma that. Ah, um, mom bod, mom, mom, yeah. mom. So you kind of get tagged as a mom. Mm. And in corporate and in in pageantry world, they don't really want hosts as moms. Mm. You know, they they're still looking for the young, fresh ones. So we'll try to like, to be young and for fresh. For a para, para be like haggard na on the side. But um, it, yeah, it's difficult. But I think what I've managed to do is kind of let my work speak for itself. Mm. So I, I've managed to create um, a reputation of, of my work ethic and my work and my credibility, and um, so I think that spoke yeah. more than what yeah. my body spoke for. So um, yeah, I was a little bit bigger, but I also wanted to be a bit thin. I wanted to also still be sexy for my husband, and I also wanted to feel good in the clothes that I wore. So. I think it was multiple pressures from different angles, but good pressure. Good mm. pressure for me to kind of want to do that for myself. Um, so yeah, I mean, for, but I do understand where moms mm. feel like they have to go back to their, yeah. you know, their pre-baby bod, yeah. which is difficult, which you can't do because your hips and stuff. You know, or it's you I, un, unless you're for others now who have very fast metabolism. Yeah. So, uban mong good. No matter how hard you try to exercise and diet, it will not be exactly the way no, it was it before you became pregnant, ba? Right? But what are the pr the pregnancy weight, uh, postpartum weight loss tips that you could share, which worked for you? Nga pa din mong ishare sa tong mommy viewers right now. Well, I noticed that it was. I, well, I think it was because they said it was Stella was my first baby, so I bounced back a lot quicker than Emma was. But I also I didn't breastfeed Emma as long as I did with Stella. Mm. I think breastfeeding really helps if you can get over the initial bump of that it hurts and it's yeah. uncomfortable, um, and you you can pursue that. That's actually going to really help with your weight loss. Uh, I read that it did it does help with making your metabolism faster mm. um, because you get more hungry and yeah. like and then but your body's burning it more. Um, so even though it's like a kaon, you know, but. It's also, I was told by my mother-in-law very early on, because I was scared of the baby weight that mm. I would gain while I was even pregnant. I was um, told by my mother-in-law, si Queenie, mm. that to eat to my content, yeah. not to eat because I'm for two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like don't believe the hype that you yeah. need to eat. She said, because the baby is fine, and, the, and my OBs have also said, the baby is fine, the baby will always get nutrients. It will suck out the nutrients in mm. your body. You will be the one that will need to kind of, you know, um, uh, put that nutrients back into into you yourself. Um, so I actually would eat to my content, get hungry again two or three hours, eat again, but never kanang hub hub gibgo na kanang kaon. So I tried to control the weight well while I was still pregnant mm. already. So kanang to the moms out there. Yeah. Don't believe the hype that you need they to tell eat you for no. two or no, for like, three. Kaundagan kay duha biyak mo nagkaon. They always tell you that. Yeah. But I always also get that from my OBs as well. They tell me na kanang control lang sa good your diet. Don't yeah. believe. Don't believe that you have to feed two people yourself and your baby. Yeah. And I think it also serves two purposes. Kay when the baby becomes too big sa sa imong tummy, that's when sometimes you have a difficult labor uh, situation. Kay yeah. ka siya. And it's also for your health-wise, you might end up getting gestational diabetes. Like, unless you're overeating on vegetables, mm. which no one really does. <laughs> like, let's face it, when you're pregnant, you're not exactly like the super extremely health buff. French fries, you know? non-sugar vegetables. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't say no to the craving sometimes. Yeah. Diba? So, um, but yeah, it's, it's good also to min to do that for yourself because you might experience um, a lot more difficult issues down the road. Yeah. So I, I, that's that's what I did. But aside from that, I mean, a little bit of exercising. I walked around a lot when I was pregnant. Mm. I did. I'm not a big fan of exercise. Mm. So what I did was I would walk around and window shop. That's ah. my exercise, and I did that every day constantly. And maybe that was the reason why you had a very smooth. I think so yeah. too. People were telling me that mm. that's the um, it helps also with the the labor part and the delivery because it's 
it kind of gets your body used to it. So you shouldn't just be lying around and, mm -hmm. and being a vegetable when you're pregnant unless you're mandated to yeah. by your doctor. So be as active as you possibly can um, when you're pregnant and that will help with your recovery mm -hmm. and with your postpartum body. Yeah. Okay, so when we return, we will be asking Carla about her parenting styles. And of course, we'll also be asking her some questions about Miss Universe 2020. Stay tuned, we'll be back here at Girl Talk. With us, you are still watching Girl Talk, and we are still with Miss Carla Paula Henry Aman. I went through your socials, Carla, and I I saw that some of your friends call you Mother Earth. Yeah, because <laughs> you're Miss Earth and you're a mom of two. I think that has stuck already. <laughs> <laughs> so nalingaw ko sa mga comments ng Mother Earth. Katong mga get well soon. Katong after you had your gallbladder surgery. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as a mom, Carla, uh, how would you describe your parenting style? Are you the strict mom or the cool mom? Do you believe in physical punishment as a form of disciplining our children? Uh, well, uh, growing up in Canada, physical punishment was really frowned upon. Mm. But having a Filipino mom, yeah. <laughs> uh, you experience it. And then now being a mom, you realize that kids can drive you so crazy that <laughs> it might happen. You might yeah. have to spank a kid mm -hmm. or two. Um, and I, I, so I believe it. I think it's, it's based on every mom's decision mm. on when they want to mm. but I'm like I mean if a child is being disrespectful to its mom and I and not listening and not obeying and just being completely unreasonable and the mom spanks him I wouldn't judge that mom True. I wouldn't look down and say like oh my god why is she hitting your kid yeah. like I just because it's not for me you don't know how hard it is until you are in that position where you have to deal with a I toddler see. with a tantrum and yeah. and so yeah, I think it's it's to each mom, it's to each decision, and I respect the parents who also don't want to enforce um, physical disciplining. But I think I am a parent who would mm -hmm. um, in certain scenarios. I've been lucky enough that it hasn't needed to happen, maybe a couple times with Stella, but so far with Emma, none. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm the, I'm the cool mom. I mean, <laughs> Stella at six years old already says, already goes like, oh, "You're so embarrassing." <laughs> You're so weird. Like she already does that to me, so I, I don't think I can be tagged as a cool mom. Um, nor do I really want to be because Aww. I feel like a cool mom is the mom that doesn't really discipline yeah. her kids to a certain point because you're not supposed to be a cool mm. mom. You're supposed to be the the figure that they look up to, that, that guides them and that disciplines them and makes sure that they're safe even when they don't want to be, mm. you know, to do things for them even when they don't want it. Make them, making them eat their vegetables, making yeah. them go to bed early, making them do their chores, you know, things like that. And I don't think a cool mom is a mom that that does that, mm. um, unless you could be, because I feel like that's that's the thing sometimes with parents. They put friendship over mm. parenting ahead, and I'm more of like I'm a parent first. Mm. I would love to be your friend, a confidant you can talk to. But I, I need to be a parent first to you because you need that person in your life more than you need a friend. Yeah. So I I would rather be that, be the uncool, strict <laughs> mom, whatever. You know, it's like yeah. I'm I'm really the disciplinarian between my husband and I. Uh, I'm the okay. very, very strong disciplinarian. I can have a showdown a kanang you want, you wanna yeah, go? Yeah, what? Yeah, you wanna yeah. go to kind of like because I will go right now. I was mas in anak ko, you know, and that's probably why, like, I've even gotten closer with Stella because I think she's, she's, um, it's like every kid, you know, every kid doesn't like to be disciplined, but mm. at the end of the day, like, who do they look for? The parent that disciplines yeah. them, like, because they know that that parent is keeping them safe, and mm. and no, and you have like, you know, fun moments with them. Also, it's not just strict and like. No fun, no joy. You know, so. 
Because I think that as much as we want our child to enjoy every minute of his or her life, I think it's our responsibility as parents to make sure that when the time comes that we will no longer be around, kaya na nila to fend for their own. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're trying to raise the children of the next generation to be thinkers for themselves, doers for themselves, mm -hmm. and to not be dependent on anybody else but themselves. Because then again, because it, then it's, it's better ultimately for them and for society. So you want them to be good, productive, kind, respectable citizens of the world. And you can only achieve that if you enforce certain disciplinary skills mm -hmm. at a very young age. Something I... I had learned from my dad. That's why they always say, like, when you grow up, there's always a moment where you, your parents will go, I told you so. Oh. To you. And when you become a parent, you will be like, you're a sick mom, you're a sick mom. But when you're there, you're like, you're a sick mom, you're a sick mom, you're a sick mom. I hate you, mom, I hate you, dad, you're ruining my life. You're a sick mom, you're a sick mom. You're a sick mom, you're a sick mom. You're a sick mom, you're a sick mom. And then, pag mom, Mama na ta, kita na yung mama, mo balik na ta yeah. sa to, ginikanan mo, ingon na sa dana, sakto sila. Sakto sa day, kama pa. <laughs> Now let's talk about um, Miss Universe 2020. Medyo na controversial siya. I just like to hear your thoughts about the comments online that Filipinos have been posting about Miss Universe Canada. Do you think that Filipinos in general still have a serious racism or colorism problem kita mga Pinoy I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna get a bunch of hate mail after this, but I definitely think that the Filipinos have a difficult time understanding what racism is um, I because a lot of it things are like even just in passing things that are said here are, are inappropriate and and you know um, whether it's race or whether it's gender or, or um, discrimination, the, sometimes the Filipinos have a hard time Realizing what's funny and what's not, mm. and what's what's in, uh, appropriate and what's inappropriate. What's what are things that you can joke about with your friends, and what are jokes that you shouldn't be saying online or to other people that you're not that close with? Boundaries, basically. Mm. <laughs> you know, you have a hard time with yeah. boundaries, especially That's, online. Yeah, and it, like it's. I mean, bullying and cyber cyber bullying and being this anon anonymous trolls online, it's not just a Filipino thing. It's, mm. I, I myself experience it from different races all over the world. From Asians to South Americans to North Americans to Europeans. I mean, it's it doesn't matter. You, it, you experience it from all types, all forms, um, all places in the world. Mm. But I think with Filipinos, I think it's incredibly insensitive, disrespectful, and inappropriate for them to be targeting that one Miss Universe candidate because yeah. of her skin color, which I, I'm like, you do realize majority of the Filipinos are not white. Mm. Uh, you know, minus all the gluta mm. and, and mm -hmm. koji soap and whatever <laughs> whitening products you're using, Filipinos are beautifully brown yeah. skin people. And, and even and our ancestors all the way back to the Aitas, I mean, they're dark. They're mm. really dark and they're beautiful. And, and I, so I never understood this white you know, whitewash or white obsession mm. for Filipinos because I, I myself am fair and, and like, you know, because I'm half, I'm always trying to get tanned. I'm always mm. trying to be a little bit more tanned. And, and so I, I don't understand. I mean, it's brown skinned people, black skinned people, white skinned people, they're all beautiful in, in all different forms. And so I don't understand why Filipinos have this obsession that only white is pretty, only white is beautiful. And, by, and and so I find it incredibly sad and I'm ashamed mm. to have read, especially from a fellow Canadian, you know, like this, this, this lady is representing yeah. a very diverse country, um, a country that celebrates all forms and all races, mm. including Filipinos. Mm. Um, and she's representing that, that country that stands for equality and stands for, for um, you know, for just beauty in all forms and here you are bashing her and here you are call it making fun of her skin color i just i don't understand it and and i and i'm so ashamed of all the filipinos who do that i'm mm. so ashamed of them having not even the guts because they hide behind their names in social media. so they don't even have the guts to even show their real faces yeah. or their real names and, and I, mga trolls. actually that's why like i was always told like oh it's very unqueenly or unbeauty queen like for me to to 
speak, speak about up, it. Speak up, you yeah. know, and, and answer these things in social media or call them out mm. or, you know, um, because apparently uh, as a beauty queen, you have to take a more um, neutral role mm. and, and kind of be a bit more um, uh, diplomatic about it. But I feel like you can't. You can't be diplomatic with people like that because Mura ka nakiglali sa pader, mas muglali sa lang tingay kag pader. At least kay bao ka na kanang dirty pader. Pader gyud siya, di gyud siya motubag, di ba? Na kani kay motubag pag siya mga white nonsense pag gitan tubag. So I I'm just I I I so ashamed. So incredibly ashamed that those few individuals reflected our country that way. Like it's it's I just if I could, if I had, if I know that that woman, I would reach out to her and apologize to her for for the way that our fellow citizens were acting. As a parent, Carla, how do you cultivate the importance of representation and inclusivity amongst your children? Especially like in your family, you're very multicultural, like you're Filipino-Canadian. My husband's um, German. He's German, <laughs> right? I think it's not focusing on representation and inclusivity. It's focusing on them as kids to not look at color, at gender, at, and look for what you want to look for. Are you if in a job? Are you looking for credibility? Then look mm. for credibility, regardless of that person's position in life or their color or their gender. Um, and that's what you teach kids, even when they play. And but kids are born without those things. And yes, so true. it's just about. It's just about honing it. It's just mm. about letting them be that way and not teaching them, you know, that this kid is more, you know, higher up than this kid mm. and this kid is is prettier than this kid or this kid is more talented than this kid. You know, like it's not about um, just like because it's us teaching them. It's them getting influenced by us, right? So if we take that part out from mm. ourselves, then they're gonna stay as innocent as they were yeah. even when they're older. They're gonna. Still treat people with respect, regardless of any of those things. So, I think it's not um, them just kind of letting them not see that. Oh, just because this this child is is black, I have to include them. Mm. Like just because I just in a group of my friends, I have to have one black friend. I have to have one Asian friend. I have to have one white <laughs> friend. Like it's not that. Yeah. It's you become friends with who you want to become friends yeah. with in terms of their personality, in terms of how kind they are, of how respectful they are, how maybe how intelligent they are. If you want to be, how if you are a person who's creative, surround yourself with creative people. Mm. So and it doesn't matter what they look like or where they come from. So that's that's what you teach your kids, and that's what you you let them experience, or that's the environment that you create for them growing up, mm. so that they don't have to feel like it's a forced inclusion, mm. it's a forced representation. Yeah. You know, so it's it should just come naturally for them, and I think if every parent can be like that for their kids, regardless of gender, race, or class mm. even, which is a big thing here for us in the Philippines. Yeah. You know, the, the division of class. Uh, so I think that's that's better off for our kids, in, in ultimately. <laughs> I think it's also like here, I don't know why. <laughs> Ay, negro, negro, negra, yeah. murag na, hala, negra na kaday, murag, kana murag, I think those terms are inappropriate. We grow up with we these derog up, yeah. derogatory terms, Mangor. Yeah, so that's why yeah. they, I think we shouldn't let our kids hear it, or mm. the kids hear it, because then they'll grow up also thinking that it's okay to use those terms. So now it's our turn to do the same for the other races of the world, for our kids, and so that they don't grow up calling somebody Negro. Sure. I would be so wow if my, any of my kids did yeah. that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> we have three minutes left for this last part, but I just like to squeeze in this last segment because we have a random twenty for girl talk. So basically, I'll just be asking you random twenty questions, oh, okay. and then you'll so just prepare. answer whatever pops into your mind okay. upon hearing the question. Okay, so let's start. What is your favorite Bisaya word? Bisaya word? Yeah. Ambot. Ambot. Somebody else also gave that same answer. Mm -hmm. Sichai. <laughs> what is your? Now that you're a mom, I'm sure that. Kanang sigi na kagpamina mga nursery rhymes. What's your favorite nursery rhyme? Um, <laughs> it's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but just because it's meaningful because Stella's name means star. Ah, okay. What uh, name a beauty queen you have always idolized? Catherine Untalan. Mm -hmm. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee. Sweet or savory? Sweet. Favorite thing to do during your me time? Sleep. 
Kusan. What is your favorite fruit? Um, uh, mango, strawberries. Mm. Confused a little. <laughs> Both at the same time. <laughs> Describe a Cebuana in one word. A Cebuana? Mm hmm. Bugoy. In a good way. Mm. What was your childhood dream? Childhood dream? Archaeologist. Really? I wanted to be, I was very interested in history. Mm. Are you a morning person or a night person? Night person by far. <laughs> I got a yaya yeah, yeah, just so I don't have to wake up in the morning. I'm not. A, I'm not too proud to admit that. I'm not, I cannot wake up in the morning. I cause that yeah. I'm gonna be akolang the whole night. Uh, <laughs> any skill or hobby that you've learned to love this pandemic? Cooking. Mm. Most memorable experience during your pageant. Um, pageant experience. One oh, like was a uh, specific. Yeah. Um, So many. Like, but one specific. thing I'm already calling it can be something funny, it can be something na, um, scary ba, nakulbaan ka, or... Okay, I think it, it might have to be one that keeps popping into my mind is my first runner-up is Miriam, Tanzania, for Miss Earth. Yeah. We had a moment when we were in Palawan and we were with the other um, staff from the organization and we just... We were talking about, I don't know if I can say this word <laughs> online, but we were talking about, um, we were talking about sex. Okay. And she educated us very well ah. about it and the cultures of Tanzania. And I just remember just being the lightest moment of the entire pageant because mm. it just didn't feel like we were in a pageant. Just, mm. It was just fun moments with her. Okay. Next question. Um, is there anything that you're afraid of? Insects? Um, heights? I hate snakes, snakes. And I'm afraid of heights. Okay. What was your favorite subject in school? History. Facebook or Instagram? <gasps> oh, <it's difficult. laughs> um, probably Facebook because it helps you connect more to people. Mm. Lipstick or lip tint? Lipstick. Lipstick. High heels or flats? High heels. Mm. One place that you'd really want to visit if not for this pandemic? Uh... Oh, that's difficult. Like, are you asking me as a mom or are you asking me as <laughs> as myself, as a woman? Um, ikaw, unsa man ang mas bugat sa imo karon? Um, okay, if I was to I as a mom, I would want to take my kids to Disneyland. I mm. promised it to my child, mm. to Stella for mm. so long. Mm. Um, as a woman, I would want to go and visit um, Egypt or Morocco. Mm. Um, and as a wife, <laughs> romantic side, I would want to go back to Italy where we had our honeymoon. Wow. Na ay daghan. Reserve na ng tulong yeah. countries. Reserve Ang pandemic na, na lang. Uh, Ang problema. Ang na lang ako man ng pandemic. <laughs> Who is the better cook? Is it you or Rico? Oh, me. By oh. far. My husband cannot cook. With feelings kay to. My gosh. Last time, ang but lang tanong sa nang siya last ning luto. Uy. Ning luto siya ng hotdog. Nabili ng plastic sa hotdog. Uy, oh, grabe. Kaya <laughs> chuko ka lang. Um, ako na lang luto sa breakfast. <laughs> this is the last question. And it's a bit challenging one because I took your Mr. Earth question. Ah. But it's, I tweaked it a bit. So if you have the chance to speak with the president, Duterte, about the state of our global pandemic, what will you tell him? Um, I think if I had a chance to sit down with him, he needs to really reach out to the LGUs, um, which I'm really proud of actually here in Cebu and in Lapu-Lapu as well, Mandawe, like that area here. But he needs to reach out to all the LGUs and make testing more available mm. and free. Because in all other countries, it's free. Yeah. Um, it should be subsidized as much as... The, I know the government's having a hard time financially, but mm. it should be subsidized, majority of it, and should be a, available to all um, who need it. Mm. And it shouldn't be shouldered by the individuals because it's very expensive. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, my number one thing I would have to say to him is there has to be clear dissemination of information. As a co former COVID positive person and as a person who's constantly online trying to find out what's the newest mm. and details about the vaccinations, about COVID, the numbers, it's very difficult 
um, to get any real information sometimes because you're getting multiple sources or different saying different things. I think there needs to be one reliable source. And I know that they're saying that that's DOH, but sometimes DOH is not disseminating it fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, if I can, I, I don't know if I have time, but if I can mm -hmm. share this. Um, we were, uh, what we learned was when you're COVID positive and you've recovered, you test and you have to wait until you're negative. Mm. So in our compound in Manila, they refused to let us out of our house until we presented a negative test. But there was a new protocol in place mm. that was that says that you cannot test negative, you won't test negative because you'll still have remnants of it in your body. Mm. So that's from the studies from WHO, from CDC, all of these reliable um, yeah. sources are saying that that's why they've no longer tested former After. positive because there's remnants in your body and you can test positive but not be infectious even up to six months because of the antibodies that you have um, yeah oh. and no just because of the the virus is still inside you but it's it's already non-reactive mm. it's already dead pretty okay. much but you, your body hasn't completely flushed it out yet so the PCR machine is very sensitive so it only detects the RNA. It doesn't detect if it's reactive or non-reactive. Mm, mm, mm. So ang mga tao muto na ay positive gihapon mi. So mm. ano may, but in reality, the virus is only alive in your body for seven days if you're mild to moderate. Ten days if you're in the hospital critical. Mm. So no matter if you're in the hospital still having a hard time, after ten days you're no longer infectious. Okay, mm. it's that's really the lifespan of the virus in the body. Um, your problems then happen with the post, kana mga mga the problems and the issues that it causes the virus. Yeah. So that's why people are dying and are still in the hospital even after three months. Mm. Um, but it's but in terms of being infectious, you're no longer after a certain period, which mm. is not clear. And we only knew about it after we talked several times to our IDs, mm. and we got that information. We tried to relay it to our board. But it was difficult because they wouldn't believe us. Yeah. Um, and so, and different doctors are telling them also different things. So I think that's why information dissemination in this country needs to be more effective yeah, and, and needs, centralized. And yeah. centralized. Even the database for positive people needs to be centralized. Mm -hmm. Also, there, um, <clears throat> we tested positive. Nag quarantine me a month later. Gipugos mo gin mi sa mong board mo retest. So nag retest me, nag gawas gihapon positive, but because of the remnants na. But ning count gihapon sa statistics. Mm. Because the there's yeah. no centralized mm. for the, the okay. names. Yeah. You can't even just type in a name and say, ay, yeah. ning positive sila ni na You're just a number. Yeah, you're just a number. So it, it, I, I think there needed to be a better. I know. Um, Hopefully, program for it. So our leaders will I be listening. I hope you're watching <laughs> President Duterte, and I hope that you you might consider what I said. So. Okay, <laughs> and you already had your message to President Duterte. Now this time, what is just your message to all the moms? Because of course, it's still Mother's Day month. <laughs> month Mother's Day yeah, month. To or, uh, Mother's Day fever. Okay. Mother's Day fever yeah, because yeah. It's, I sh I think it should be Mother's Day all year round. <laughs> <laughs> What's your message to all the moms she's watching? I think to all the moms. Um, um, I am still also, a, I still call myself a newbie mom. I'm still also learning new things and, and every day, I don't think there's ever a professional mom out there because mm. it depends on every child that we have. So find your own rhythm, find your own um, ways of doing things and, and, um, and learn from other moms as well. Don't be afraid to, to take on some of the stuff that they're saying. I mean, um, as long as it's without judgment, mm. you know, just just talk to other moms. The best way for you to learn is to always talk to other people who ex have experienced different things. So, um, yeah, create your own mommy groups and, and learn from each other. Uh, and also consider that during this pandemic, it's really hard for your kids as well. I'm sure you guys are all experiencing it, but you know, certain children are a lot more sensitive than others maybe and have experienced anxiety. So um, I know that your fear of the virus is very great, uh, but Sometimes we also just have to conquer that fear a little bit and, mm. and maybe find a way to get our kids to go outside and, and let them experience nature and the beach and, and a different surrounding environment so to help them out. Um, from one mom who had a child that experienced anxiety through the pandemic to you guys, um, being outdoors really, really helps your kids a lot. So try and get them outdoors as much as you can. Not in the metropolitan, but maybe 
outside if you can, you know, bring them out to the beach, bring them out to the bukid area. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of ways. Um, and if there's not, if you can't find any, message me na lang. <laughs> I'll point you guys to the right direction. <laughs> Thank you, Kaya, Carla. Thanks, you have something Annie. for you for Mother's Day. Oh, for me? Yes, we do. It's from Dried Flowers PH. Oh. So, Chiral Gomez sent this. Ta-da! So, <gasps> it's a Dried Flowers dough. Oh my gosh, from dried this flowers, is so beautiful. PH. Happy Mother's Day, Carla. Oh. It's her token of gratitude. <laughs> Thank you that so you much. you really took the time and the effort despite <laughs> your kids being sick. I hope that they'll get well soon. Thank you. This is beautiful. And it's from Car Carol? Chiril. Chiril. Yes. She made it. Yeah. Oh, Chiril, thank you so much. This is this is going to be a beautiful centerpiece in my new house. <laughs> I will definitely feature this. It's so pretty. <laughs> thank you, Kaio. Thank you. Thanks, and everyone. Again, thank you so much to Chiril Gomez from Dried Flowers BH. And of course, thank you so much, Carla, Paula, Henry, Aman. I enjoyed our Chica session <laughs> for today. And hopefully, you enjoy it. So again, to all the mothers out there, there. As Carla has mentioned, it is Mother's Day every day. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. This has been Andrea Patania Matthew for Girl Talk. Happy Mother's Day, Mom Cheese!